Okay, so I was going to walk through an example worksheet, and the big difference this time is we will end with adding dimensions after we do a view base. This is a little bit more challenging of a worksheet to do because of where these features are located. So if you look at the sectional view that they give on the worksheet, you'll notice that it is not something that goes straight through the middle. It has hidden lines for holes on both sides, even though if you draw a line through the center, it only has holes on one side. And this is by convention. When you have something that's radial like this, they will make a sectional view that tries to show each of the features as it is radially. So even though if I, if I slice this across, this is not actually what I would see but it is a better representation of what's happening here with the with a wedge at the edges and where the location of the holes to see how far away from the edge those are. So we'll play around with some more um, view section settings at the end of this too, just to walk through it. And again, you don't have to choose this worksheet, but it is a good one to explore a few more features and kind of some unique um, some unique features that this one has. So there's no correct way to draw any of these things so long as the final dimensions are correct. I like to start with kind of the base of the thing and in this case I'm going to make that circle and I'm actually going to extrude it down so that then I can also build up from it and I won't have to mess around with moving my user coordinate system for a while. So I'm extruding it down by two, and now I'm still at the top with my user coordinate system so I can make this cylinder coming up. And for the cylinder, rather than use the extrude command, I'm gonna use press pull. That will let me um, just choose the area between two circles and pull both of those up at once. So starting from the center, I'm also centering everything at the origin, zero, zero. Sometimes that's nice to, to just kind of have alignment at the origin for, for, round, for round things. Okay, so press pull will let me pick an area in between the lines. So not choosing the lines, but in between the lines. Pull that up, four. And the next thing I'm going to do while my coordinate system is still at the world view is to add these circles in. And I will use a polar array to do this because that's going to be the easiest way to get the location of those other two. So I'll start with the circle that's directly to the left. So counting those squares, I'm over four. And then once I have one in place to get three that are equally spaced, around the origin, I will use the array polar command. And I'll just say I want three items, only one row. And that will equally space them 120 degrees from one another. I'm then using press pull again. You can select multiple things all at the same time with that press pull command. And pushing it into the object will subtract that out. Okay, this next part is going to be a little bit tricky. So what I want to do is these ribs that are coming off. And I'm going to create these with the wedge command. And I'm going to overshoot the edge of my circle so that it wraps around and evenly touches the entire curved cylinder. So sometimes if you overlap and then join together, that's going to make sure that everything is touching along the edge. Okay, so for the wedge command, remember the first point you put in, that's going to be the side that's tall. So we will put this 1.5 comma positive 0 0.5, this upper left-hand corner in first, and then the 5.5 negative 0.5 corner in second. This is all with respect to that original coordinate system that's just right there in the center. And for the height of this, I had to look at these triangles and do a little bit of trig here. So this is actually the original one is 3, 4, 5 triangle, but we want to overlap that a little bit. So I'm going to come over to 4, 
and then up to five and a third. So five and a third versus four, four versus three, those are the same ratios on this. So kind of a tangent opposite over adjacent has the same ratio. Whenever you have a decimal, instead of putting in the decimal like 5.3333, I'm actually going to give the height here as a fraction. AutoCAD will take fraction. So typing in 53 divided by 10, that will give a more accurate dimension when we get through this thing. Okay, let's go try it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and change from a conceptual view to a 2D wireframe so that I can see that coordinate system in there. And I'm gonna come over to my 3D tools and use wedge command. And remember, if those 3D tools are not showing up for you, right click anywhere in the blank ribbon and make sure those 3D tools are selected. Okay, so for the wedge, and if you forget how to use any of these, remember just leave your cursor over it and it will say number one, click here, number two, click here, and then three. And the thing to realize about this is the first corner is on the same side that the tall side of the wedge is on. So if it's going to the opposite side, that means you didn't, <laughs> what the order of this is very important. So the first side also needs to be the tall side of the wedge. Starting up the wedge command, the first corner I'm going to give it is 1.5 comma 0.5. So that's gonna be the tall side of it. The next corner I'm going to give is 5.5 and negative 0.5. And then the height, and this is the other thing, instead of saying 5.3333, I'm putting this in as a fraction. So 53 divided by 10, enter. And if I then go back to conceptual view, you can see I have that wedge on here and it has overshot the top, but that allows it to come up flush all the way around that curved surface. So overlapping two things next to a curved surface that's how you won't get any gaps in between the parts when we... Um... Okay, so I need three of these. I'm actually gonna come back to my home tab and use the polar array function. So select object, I'm gonna grab that entire 3D object and I will uh, do the array around the origin at zero, zero. And just like before, we only have three items here, and that will give me equally spaced wedges, which is great. Okay, I'm gonna exit out of this. One funny thing about arrays, you'll notice as I select this, they all highlight together. They're kind of connected to one another, which means it's very difficult to edit it. So before going further, I'm going to explode these and be very very careful with the explode command exploding a solid will turn it into surfaces and can mess up the solid nature of it exploding an array will turn it into three different arrays so we can explode our array here so i'm going to just select these wedges hit enter and now they are three separate entities that i can then edit. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do maybe before we edit it, I'm going to come back to my 3D tools and I'll go ahead and use the fillet edge to, to put a that curved rim around the edge of this. So starting up that fillet edge, that radius was 0 0.5, so remember to define all of those little things like the radius before you, you try to fill it it. And then I'm gonna select the edge and this will take it all the way around. So that'll be kind of the easiest way to do that. Enter and enter again. Now that that is on there, I'm gonna go ahead and use the union command. So if I did that union before the fillet edge, I'd have to select all those edges independently. Okay, so union, 
There we go, it's all stuck together. So now everything is one piece. And the last thing to do is to pop our user coordinate system up to the top and carve off those extra little triangles at the top. So UCS 00, and we're popping it up four. And I am turning on my ortho snaps here to make sure that when I get the X and the Y on here, that it is snapped to the surface. Okay, so yeah, be very, very careful when you're doing your coordinate system. Look at it from a couple different viewpoints to really make sure that it's flat and horizontal because otherwise everything you draw on it is going to be lopsided. Okay, drawing a circle up there, so center of zero, zero, and a diameter of five. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select that circle. Sometimes it's hard to select something right on top of it. If you go from the left to the right, it only grabs what's inside that box. So since the circle is the only thing that's entirely inside that box, Selecting left to right will be the easy way to grab that thing. I'm going to then extrude this up and then we'll subtract it off. So it doesn't really matter the height because we're going to subtract it off. And then here comes the subtract command. So we're taking, click on the object you want to keep, enter, and then click on the object you want to get rid of, enter. Okay, moving UCS back to the original spot, the world view. Uh, one last thing before we head over. The book wanted everything scaled so that each square was equal to 0 0.2. So I'm going to take this object, enter base point 0, 0, 0, and we'll use a scaling factor of 0 0.2. So that will change all of the dimensions and the object itself so that it's the size that the book had it on there. And you'll notice that that only scaled the, um, the solid. So I'm going to go ahead and erase out those sketching lines so that all we're left with is a solid. And remember to save as you go here. Okay, heading over into my layout. I'm going to go ahead, double click on this, and change to the chapter and the exercise that I grabbed this out of. I'll, I'll update today's date. And then after we put this in and see what scale will fit the best, then I'll update the scale on here too. So remember to to keep everything in your title block, what it needs to be. So I'll start with the view base command and enter will grab the object out of model space. This looks a little bit small. So before I click it down, I'm going to go ahead and click on scale and I'll make it eh, 1.25. I'll just pop it up a little bit. That should be better. Okay, click on the first view, enter the top view, click, click, and right click, and enter. So now it's generating those view base. And I like this first view, but this is looking a little bit awkward. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And we're going to play around with sectional views. So here we go. I'm going to say view section, click on the parent view, and I have my snapping tools on here. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of hover over the centers here and stretch that out so that I'm a little bit away from the surface. Go to the center and then this next point, I want it to actually carve through kind of where these center points are. And if you get the line started, this will sometimes let you drag it out in the same direction. So kind of hover over it, 
and then right click and enter once you have it on there. It might take you a couple tries to get that just right. Now this is starting to get closer to the view that the book has. It's still not exact here. So I'm going to say right click, enter. So you can see the hatching pattern is a little bit odd. And I did get the two holes in there, but I'm not getting these wedge features in there well. So before I um, go too much into this, I'm going to go ahead and, and move a few of these views around to, to get them to be aligned with each other. And then remember, for anything, right click on it, and you'll get a whole bunch of other options. So. I'm going to right click on this and say edit view <clears throat> and I get this whole new set of tools up here. So instead of doing the full view, I'm actually going to do a distance and for this I'm going to select the size of that hole that's on there. So I only want to grab kind of what the holes are. And then I'm also going to come over here and choose just visible lines and maybe I'll take away the hatching because it was only grabbing that on half of it for some reason. Okay, so that's, that's a little bit better. It's still not showing the fins, so I'm actually going to draw those in myself. So opening up the line command and I have my snapping tools and just like I draw something in the model space, I'm finishing up that last little piece of it by hand, by just drawing that in. Okay, here's the, the section label. Again, I can probably change the font size on this. And I'm going to pull that up top. And that 1.25, I can now update my scale. So I can say 5 to 4 or 1.25. I'll just leave it 1.25. Starting up with dimensioning tools. So those are you're going to find up here under the annotate tab. Depending on what you have, there's a different tool for each of it. <clears throat> so if you want the height of something that's a linear. For a full circle, you usually dimension those as a diameter versus if it's just part of a curve or an arc, dimension that as a radius. If you have a whole bunch of things that you're all dimensioning together, this dim continue will get everything aligned with one another. Over here, you can also set the distance between your dimensions so that they're all spaced kind of evenly with one another. And you can also change inspect them and do the dim style. I'm going to start out actually with the dim style. And I'm going to type that into the command line so that this will change the style for all of my dimensions. The first screen, I can either start up a brand new style, in which case it'll list down here. So if I want maybe three significant figures versus two significant figures, or I have two different kind of things. But I'll just go ahead and modify the current standard view right now. And walking through this, I'm going to bump down the size of everything. So there's my text size and text height, arrow size. I want to make sure that I don't probably need Three, yeah, I'm going to set my precision to just two decimal places instead of four. And you can always come back and change all of these. So here's fit. So you can force everything between the extension lines if there's not enough room. And you can say, please keep the text between the extension lines. So play around with this and just see what goes so you'll probably be opening up dim style back and forth as you create your dimensions to, to fix it. Here's the primary units. So you can have decimal or you can have scientific. 
You can have um, engineering units play around with those. Also over here is tolerance. So if you would like to define plus or minus, there's symmetrical tolerance or deviation, and you can tell it the upper and lower value. So this is great for the machine shop. If you want to tell them just how flat and how aligned everything is going to be, I'm not going to mess with that right now, but just know that those are up here along with all of your other dimensioning tools. So explore, change them around. You can always reopen this and redo your dimension style. So I'll say OK, and then set current, and then close. Let's go ahead and... So the rules for dimensioning are you want to keep as much clear space as you can dimension towards the inside not on the outside if there's something like a circle you're not going to dimension it down here where it's a hole you want to look at it where it's most clearly visible so i will go ahead and start with dim diameter because it is a full circle so i'll go ahead and say select the circle and it creates a leader for me. After you've placed it, you can click on that dimension and pull on these blue boxes to stretch it and move it around. So I'll go ahead and hit enter and we'll just walk through and dimension all of these circles. So for this one, I want to kind of pull this so that it's outside of the object and we'll go ahead and and just keep walking around this so again i'm going to select this and kind of pull it away from the object and sometimes it, it takes a few a few clicks before you get everything in there just how you like it so we'll walk around and and dimension all of these diameters. For some of these, if you see the same feature in three different places, you can also double click on the dimension and kind of arrow over, and I'm gonna say this is three places. So this dimension happens in three places, and you can put that on two line. This is a multi-line text. So you can add some notes like that to it. Okay, coming down here, so I've already dimensioned the diameter of the circles. I've already dimensioned the diameter of this. You don't want to label the same thing multiple times. Just label everything once and then it won't be cluttered. So what I'm gonna do, I don't have the height labeled. So I'll go ahead and add that height these little arrows, so sometimes you can right click on it, it says reassociate, but often it's easier just to redraw it. Now this one, the arrows were too large to include the arrows and the dimensions, so that was one of my dim styles is to say, hey, if there's not enough room for it, but if that looks a little bit odd, I might go back to my dim style and change that up. So that, so I'm just going to say modify. And rather than forcing the fit to always keep this and suppress, I'll go back up to their default. And usually their default is kind of good. So I'll say set current and we'll try that one more time. So just, you know, as you're going through this, so there's dim linear. It all starts with dim, dim diameter, dim linear, dim aligned, dim, dim this, dim that. Okay, so there is the height. And maybe over here on the other side, and I better make sure that these two are, are aligned with one another. Those are, that looks a little bit better. So dim linear again. And anywhere along this base will be fine to anywhere along the top. And then as I pull it out, that will give me the height. 
If you're dimensioning something and you realize that you didn't draw it to the right dimensions, go back to your part and actually redo it. So I know you can type over this and change the numbers, but the 3D print or feeding that file into the CNC machine, it's going to be what you drew it to. So, so don't fudge factor the dimensions. Go back and actually change the part to be the right dimensions. And this is where you find out if you, <laughs> if you got everything in there right. Okay, so do we have everything? We have all the diameters. We have the heights. The only thing left is maybe how far away from the edge this circle is. So the last little di distance that I'm going to do here is, is right over here. So there is the distance away from, from the edge. And this is something where I might want to move that over to the other side. Okay, and I think that is going to be everything. So we have the dimensions on it. And we have a sectional view so we can kind of see the inside better. Okay, so pick a worksheet and then add dimensions to it. Go through and just try out especially these kinds of things. So, and it depends on what you're drawing of, of which tools you'll need. But this is where all the dimension tools are. And you can, yeah, if you have a bunch of linear dimensions, try out the dim continue. Or, yeah, you can, you can look at the spacing. See if that helps you out a little bit. Add some center lines. Maybe that would be good. So that's kind of a nice thing, too. OK, so play around with these guys and, and hope it won't take you too long.